Unlike Suzuki and Isuzu, who pulled out of the U.S. market years ago, Mitsubishi has somehow been able to hold on as a small Japanese automaker with vacillating interest in selling cars here. But now that they are a part of the Renault-Nissan alliance, we should expect to see more competitive products in Mitsu showrooms, beginning with this all-new Nissan Rogue-based 2022 Outlander. The 10-year-old compact-sized Outlander Sport is still far and away Mitsu's best seller, but it's this bigger Outlander, which has nothing in common with the Sport, that wears the flagship mantle, even available as a plug-in hybrid way before that sort of thing was fashionable. It's done very well for Mitsubishi, and for its next act, it leans on Alliance partner Nissan for its bones and just about everything else. For all intents and purposes, this is the Nissan Rogue, with cooler styling and a minuscule third row. This fully loaded SEL Touring trim with all-wheel drive is priced at about $1,500 less than the Rogue Platinum I tested and comes with a better warranty. And while the Rogue did away with its slide and recline second row seat, the Outlander does both of those things. There's more people space in here than before, as this Outlander is two inches wider than the previous model. Though the engine is slightly larger than the 2020 model's standard four-cylinder motor, gas mileage remains the same at 26 mpg, though with a smaller driving range of 377 miles. But this Outlander story is really about improved quality, greater breadth of features, and its newfound appeal. The design is a grand slam for Mitsu, here in the upcharged diamond white paint, looking tough yet elegant, sporty yet functional. Having already driven the new Rogue earlier this year, the Mitsu experience is nearly identical. This highest level SEL trim with touring package is ostensibly the Rogue Platinum, and as such is very well appointed. With the only glaring emissions being a height adjustable passenger seat and home link garage door opener. Otherwise, I would say that Mitsu is more than living up to its end of the $38,590 bargain. It is undoubtedly the highest level of quality and depth of amenities ever seen in one of their vehicles. But there's actually very little here to distinguish it as a Mitsubishi, other than the really cool graphics you get in the driver information display and the logo projection. There's also a standard third row seat here that Nissan doesn't offer at all, but it's the kind that you would probably want to use pretty sparingly because, frankly, this vehicle just isn't that big. So, it's the styling which is the true standout Mitsu feature, and it's alluring enough to pull people out of the Nissan showroom. But this one is also a little heavier, and the engine, which was already pushed to its limits, feels like a dog under full throttle acceleration. But I am averaging 27 mpg. It's a shame the V6, or at least V6-like power, has been shelved because the Outlander undoubtedly needs more. But the CVT is really good and not at all a concern. The 2.5-liter backed powertrain is smooth but underwhelming at only 181 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque. 20-inch wheels and all-wheel drive are standard on this trim, and with gravel, snow, and mud off-road drive modes and hill descent control, I've pushed this Outlander and its 8.4 inches of ground clearance onto some medium-grade trails to see how it plays in the wild. The dial makes setting it up easy, and there are some additional off-road tools and gauges to aid in confidence, such as the multi-view camera system. The super all-wheel control system, as Mitsu calls it, has been upgraded with brake-based torque vectoring, which works both on and off-road to improve control and drivability. This setup also pushes some power to the rear wheels upon takeoff for a more legitimate SUV feel. So, feel free to push boundaries a little bit more with this one. It feels like it can handle it. Towing is rated at only 2,000 pounds, but there is trailer stability assist. Other than the lack of power, which only becomes an issue when you really step on it, the Outlander is a very nice drive with steering that's more connected and handling with higher fidelity than this class of vehicle is typically concerned with. While the overall cabin quietness and Nissan's zero gravity front seats up the premium comfort quotient. And when you're ready to get after it off the pavement, these various off-road drive modes add a layer of confidence that give this Outlander a true SUV feel. 
but a turbo under the hood would certainly do wonders. I'd also appreciate some dampers that can alleviate some of the suspension's impact harshness. Otherwise, the ride is smooth and under control. If you're familiar with Mitsu's, then this interior is shocking, in a good way. The touring trim benefits from higher quality leather, an attractive saddle tan and black with quilting details. There's a heated steering wheel, a big head-up display, a 10-speaker Bose audio system, a panoramic roof, and sunshades on the rear windows. There's even wireless car play and a conveniently located charging pad. Android users still have to tether. And Nissan's system is solid with very simple touchscreen controls. As for driver tech, this is basically Pro Pilot Assist with a little switch on the right side of the wheel for adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which is also linked to the Navi for smoother and safer control. It's all here, auto high beams, auto hold, lane departure this, collision avoidance that. Nissan does this stuff very robustly. There's also a hands-free lift gate for the significantly longer cargo compartment with both rows of seats folded. The opening is also much wider. The third row seats are to be used on an emergency basis only, and you've got to love that Mitsu retain their medieval-looking paddles, which double as headrests that stow under the floor until needed. There are also levers back here for dropping the second row, leading to midsize SUV cargo room. It's a great-looking cabin with lots of space. As long as you don't have a lead foot, the Outlander is a solid choice in the not-so-compact SUV segment and will do well for Mitsu's U.S. aspirations. For TestDriveNow.com, I'm Steve Hammes.